Hello, welcome to World Without Rule of Law. Tonight, we are going to talk to Mr. James Clifton. And James is a dear friend and a brother in the Lord. And he has an amazing story, uh, amazing testimony of what God has done in his life and continues to do in his life today. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. And so, um, just say, starting out, you know, uh, James was a young man. He was in church pretty much his whole life and kind of like a lot of us were, um, just taking up space, so to speak. Not, you know, um, not really part of the program, but, you know, there kind of like a lot of us, I think, can relate to that. I know I can. When I was young, you know, my parents dragged me to church and that's kind of how it was. It, well, I was there because it was an, a family obligation. It wasn't through a choice of my own, let's say. And so we drift and James has a similar experience there starting out and uh, as a young man just out of high school he joins the Marine Corps. So in the course of that, that he was in the Marine Corps for a few years and um, he ended up having his wisdom teeth taken out and he got a, a, like an abscess and had to take pain medication. And First time ever in my life taking pain medicine. Yeah. Was this time. And so what happens a lot like a lot of us, right? You really like it. And then next thing you know, you've developed this addiction to pain medication. And so um, fast forward ten years, he gets out of the Marine Corps, he's going through you know, roughly eight, ten, twelve years. He's on pain meds, he's gets caught up with other drugs, he ends up um, doing methamphetamines and takes a couple of rests and gets to the point where now his life is in a downward spiral and he's living in the woods out back of his dad's house in a tent. And um, I'm gonna let him take it from here. It's a pretty amazing story. I hope you all enjoy it. Well, thank you, Tim. And um, thank you to all who are viewing. I appreciate you watching. Um, there's a whole lot to my story, but I know we don't have all the time in the world. But anyway, um, take it back just a little bit from what Brother Tim said. Um, I got on meth pretty bad uh, for about eight years altogether. It was pain pills every single day to function. And um, then I got introduced to methamphetamine. Um, it wasn't long after that I learned how to make it and it completely consumed my life. Well, one day I got a knock on the door and there was an anonymous tip and the police officers wanted to come in and they said that they heard that I was making meth. So I let them in, they found a piece of aluminum foil that I'd used to smoke meth on and um, they took it and then they convinced somebody dear to me that I cared about that if they give them something that I had made or whatever then they wouldn't get in any trouble. Well they were fooled and uh, long story short I was pretty much giving up and um, they left and they, I guess they had to take what they had gotten to the lab, make sure it was real. And um, you, you think that that would have woke me up, but it didn't. It just caused me to be get worse. And um, so I think it was a couple months after that, uh, the morning after Christmas, 2013, um, I attempted suicide and thought all hope was lost, my life was over with. I woke up in the hospital three days later on life support and um, even went to the crazy house a few times. And when I got out, still didn't learn my lesson. And I'm, I don't know. Um, so I end up living out in the woods in a tent. You know, I done burnt my dad's camper up uh, in the woods, making meth, burn my hands up real bad, and I'm, I'm in the woods, living in the tent, lost everything, and um, 
My dad comes down in the woods <coughs> and said that the police officers are there to arrest me and I'd been indicted. And I stayed on the run for about a week and uh, my dad came back down in the woods and said, if you don't come now, they're going to come get you. So he talked me into turning myself in. So he took me, I turned myself in, they handcuffed me and said, you're being charged with manufacturing methamphetamine, which is 10 years in prison. So I'm in there and three weeks go by and um, somebody told me that if I give a guard a suicide note that I would get put in the hospital and get out of jail. And I did it because jail is a horrible place and I want to get out. So uh, they took me serious. They didn't put me in the hospital. They put me in a little bitty cell by myself, took all my clothes away. I was completely naked and they put a white, they, they give me a white paper gown to put on. No underwear, no socks, no clothes, no nothing, no blankets. There's a little bitty thin piece of metal bolted to the wall for you to lay on except they didn't give you a mat or anything. So I'm freezing, begging them to let me out. I wasn't serious. I was just saying that to try to get out of jail. And they wouldn't let me out. And when I ate, I ate with my hands. And um, 48 hours came and I was completely broken. And And they brought my clothes in to me in a blanket. And when I got warm for the first time, I knew that was God's grace. It was like, like Jesus wrapped his loving arms around me and let me know that everything's going to be okay no matter what. All the mistakes I made, it, it, everything was going to be okay. And so I said, all right, Lord. If you help me to stay clean and give me a chance to make things right in my life and with my family, I'll live for you the rest of my life. And, you know, after I've been in there three weeks, you know, my conscience came back because drugs steal your conscience away. Well, when my head cleared up, all the things I ever did wrong in my life were weighted on my shoulders. And I had this fire, you know, you you want to call your little girl and say that you're sorry for using drugs and um, neglecting her and you can't, you know, you want to apologize to people. So with that fire and then all of a sudden I realized that I don't have to have a drug to function every day. And uh, so when I made that decision and I've done it before but it wasn't serious. But this time, I asked Jesus to come into my heart and save me from all my sins. And, and it, was, it was serious this time. It wasn't just because somebody told me I needed to do that to be saved. It was, it was real to me. And it was almost like I could see into a, 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 a glass, a mirror. And I could see exactly who I was on the inside ugly and dark and you know um just who i was on dirty nasty you know filthy and i knew that i needed more help than anything or anybody could give me on this earth and what i experienced there was pure humility it wasn't just being humbled you know um Jail was a horrible place, and jail didn't jail didn't open my eyes. Um, so I made this promise to God, and He, um, I asked Him, or I told Him, and made a promise that I live for Him the rest of my life, and um, so they let me out of the cell and then I went in with back with everybody else and uh, I found a Bible and I started reading and didn't understand it all at first but I applied it to my life 
and it was serious. It wasn't just saying that I found Jesus just to get out of jail. It was I realized that my, uh, you know, my life really needed to change. Um, you know, day by day, you know, my my mouth, I wasn't cussing as much, and I was all of a sudden taking responsibility for my own actions, and I learned to forgive. You know, once once you get some of that bitterness and you know and you're forgiving people and things that they don't deserve forgiveness but we do it because God forgives us first and once I started doing that you know it's like the more you the more bad you get out of your heart the more God can fill you with his love so it started becoming an addiction for the first time a good addiction um, for the first time, I, you know, was feeling good. Even though I was behind bars, I, I was a free man, if that makes any sense. And so anyway, uh, I wrote a letter home, accepting responsibility for everything. Um, for the first time, accepting responsibility, and it wasn't everybody else's fault. And... Uh, before that letter made it home I was called out of jail and my grandparents came and put their house and car up to get me out before this letter made it home and uh, so I was a, a drug addict for 10 years every single day in those 48 hours with Jesus and experiencing humility cured me. You know, it wasn't being in jail for 30 days. Um, it was those 48 hours. If I'd have got out a week before that, I'd still be a drug addict right now. Um, like a bro like a, a wild horse had to be broken, you know, to be tamed. And, um, you know, I finally realized how small I am in this world um, that it ain't about me and it ain't about you it's about God and um, us being tools that he uses for his glory so anyway so I got out and I done everything I could to just focus on making things right with family build relationships and with my daughter and um, Gradually, I seen God's plan come into play and uh, started walking with a Christian flag a few times around my town. Uh, and um, I really didn't care about what everybody else thought. I just wanted to, to show everybody that I was Chris, a Christian and proud of it. And I wanted to show God's power um, because for anybody to see James Clifton doing anything good, then it had to be God. You know, it has Amen. Amen. For, for somebody like me to change. And, um, so, and so now, you know, that's interesting to uh, a, a good place to segue into how God is working in your life today, right? And to, um, about the parole issue and what he's doing and what you're doing today for God and um, you know, that's, I think that's an important part of the story that I wouldn't want to leave out. Very important, Tim. Um, when I got out of jail, I still had a few more court dates to go to. And on the last one, um, I pretty much expected to go to jail for a couple of years. And so when I went to court, um, because it was just word of mouth, there was no proof that I did anything. Um, the judge suspended the manufacturing and I just got possession charge. So I got a felony drug possession charge. And uh, so after that, I just ran wild for, you know, just, just everybody, no, nothing could touch me. And I just wanted to serve God and give him all I had. So I got involved with uh, the van route at church. Um, I didn't have a license for a long time or a vehicle. 
and uh, got involved with the van route. And then in time, uh, got my license, got uh, my own truck, and I started driving the van route myself. And well, with a partner, of course. Um, uh, anyway, I was supposed to be on probation the rest of my life. And um, it was a month or two ago. I cannot even remember. But anyway, not long ago at all, my probation officer uh, wrote a letter to the judge to get me off probation early so I could go in and minister maybe at Camp 28 or the prison ministries. And uh, I'm super excited about that. Um, so after four years of being on probation and I thought it was going to be the rest of my life and uh, I'm off probation thank you Jesus and um, let's see so I get I, I got a wonderful opportunity me and brother Tim to work with the children's ministry the middle school class at our church and uh, I get to sing in the choir not because I sing good, but just to be involved. And I um, got off probation after four years. And um, so I'm getting ready to get involved with Good News Jail Ministries. Um, I got all my information in my packet and all that. Uh, got to meet with, with some people about it and get approved. And then I'll be able to go into the jails. And that's important to me because that's where it all started for me. Also, uh, I started with uh, my, my volunteer fire department. It's Patrick Henry Volunteer Fire Department. And uh, I right away just went and took the Firefighter 1 class. And... You know, I was real nervous, didn't think I was going to do good. And I just found out that I passed my Firefighter 1 exam. And I'm extremely blown away because I know it had nothing to do with me. I should have failed that test. But now I know it was God's will. And, um, and then recently I also get to, uh, I'm getting appointed to be chaplain at the same fire department on January the 1st. So very overwhelmed, you know, from a drug addict to getting to be a chaplain at my fire department. Um, so, the real power was when I got out of jail and I decided to use my bad past to help others for the good. And once you accept your past to make your flaws known, it's freedom. You know, nobody can use it against you. And once I realized that I could help and inspire people by sharing my testimony, which of course is not about me, you know, it's about Jesus and what he's done in my life. Uh, but anyway, and I love to inspire people and encourage people and, and my life be used to share hope and uh, that, that there is hope even for the worst ones, the ones who everybody's pretty much has lost hope in. They think there's no, no chance in them ever having a good life or uh, somebody who's messed her whole entire life up and got felonies on the record and lost her kids and you know lost everything um, there there is hope and my life is proof um, I've been clean for four and a half years four and a half and I was somebody I thought wouldn't go a day without a drug um, I was pretty well known in my area and uh, so it's been a pretty good shock to everybody and um, I got a great relationship with my family uh, and my daughter and she's nine years old her name's Riley and I get to share Jesus with her and uh, when I have her um, I get my daughter every other weekend and 
uh, when I do have her, she goes to church. And uh, so you just you do the best you can with what you got until God gives you something else. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's awesome to look at the power of God, the power of Jesus, what he does in our lives. Isn't it amazing that he can reach down into a prison cell and take a broken person who's pretty much messed up his life, turn him around and use him for his good, his glory, right? Amen. Make a change in the most wretched, you know, it just goes to show you whatever your situation is, whatever your sins are, whatever you're doing to keep you apart from the Lord, you know, he can he can reach down and he can forgive that. He can use you. He can use anyone for his glory. And James's story is proof and testimony of that. Amen. How he can take someone as wretched of a sinner and a drug addict, turn him around, turn his life around and now he's going into the prisons and he's ministering and witnessing to other prisoners and how powerful that is because it's not somebody like me or somebody else just going in to give the gospel it's somebody who's been there who's lived that life who has had those experiences and so there can be there's an opportunity there for a connection on a deeper level and God uses that. He will use that. Amen. And I think it's, you know, that's just great. And just goes to show you that, you know, we're all sinners, but God can use every single one of us in his own way. Amen. So we just open ourselves up for it and just, you know, be ready to see and to know what his plan is and what his will is for our lives. And to see that when he has an opportunity to use us, that we will go along with that. And, and we will serve him in that way. I think it's an awesome story. I thank you so much, James. For, You're welcome for telling it. I think it's it's great. I mean, it, it just I've heard it several times and uh, heard your testimony several times, and it just speaks to my heart every time. I'm proud to know you. Proud to call you my brother. Amen. Thank you Same here. Thank you for coming and thank you for sharing with my subscribers your testimony, your story. Amen. God bless you. God bless you too, Brother Tim. Thank you. God bless all you. Thanks yeah. for watching. Have a good night.